Hey Stashers, welcome to episode 113 of the Craft Stash Podcast. I'm your host, Kim. Today's show, Rainbows Are the New Black. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Um, I am, again, if you guys have noticed, upgraded the technology and I feel like every um, episode is a, is a learning experience for me. So I will try to stop apologizing for the technology soon, but I'm recording without a microphone today. So hopefully you guys can hear me clearly. I really wanna do this to make sure that the audio uh, or the mic input on the camera is sufficient and that I don't always have to have a mic. So if it doesn't work out, sorry for you. Let's try again next time. Without further ado, let's get crafty. So a lot of stuff has gone down since I last recorded. Hopefully you guys um, enjoyed the, I think I called it a bite episode. Um, rather than a bite-sized episode. I used to be in marketing, so I'm very big, big on branding and making up themes and names for everything. So in theory, there are bite-sized episodes, which are very, very short episodes that I upload from my phone or from my iPad. And then these bite episodes are kind of just also short, but you know, not necessarily about crafting or stashing, but more about the quiet times that we spend uh, in crafting so I just recorded myself spinning a little while just because I thought it was a nice thing to do um, a little bit meditative hopefully and I have a couple more of those kinds of videos in the works where it's just a close-up either me knitting or spinning or winding yarn just a kind of like a quiet meditation with crafting so to speak um, so be on the lookout for those and of course there are these regular episodes where depending on the amount of time that I have I, I kind of chat with you guys for a little bit longer so rest assured today is a fully fledged episode I'm gonna have what I'm crafting what I'm stashing and a little bit of periphery and if I can find my extras I might record some extra video because uh, we have another group hug coming up let's get started so actually, I think I might start with what I'm stashing because um, the episode is called uh, Rainbows Are the New Black because I have a lot of rainbow stuff happening lately and I wanted to share them with you. Um, give me one sec. There we go. Okay. Touch to focus. Yay, I'm learning to use my camera. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm stashing a lot of rainbow colored things lately. So I wanted to kind of show you guys those things are. I'm not usually a fan of rainbows, don't get me wrong, I love Kermit, I love the pride flag, um, but rainbows usually aren't my thing, but somehow this spring I just needed some color and I need all of them all at the same time, so I've been stashing a lot of rainbow things. The first up is this lovely skein, and I might have showed this to you already, gosh. If you've already seen this, um, if you are on my Instagram feed then you've definitely seen this, but if you've already seen this in the show, I'm sorry, but I'll show you again because it's so pretty. Um, this is, sorry, I gotta hold it up here. This is a uh, white birch fiber arts. Um, this is an Etsy seller, and this is the colorway called Nothing Says Screw You Like a Rainbow. It's 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. Um, and as it's caked up, you kind of can't tell the awesomeness that's happening, so I'll insert a picture. But this is a self striping yarn that is a stripe of a rainbow block of maybe six or seven rows, and then a block of blue sky, which is blue and white with the, to kind of emulate fluffy clouds, and it just made me instantly happy. I think quite a few podcasters have this exact same yarn, but it's such a great color that I felt like I should have it too, because rainbows are for everybody, and they make me happy. And I think when I bought this, I was kind of in a grumpy mood, so the fact that it's called Nothing Says Screw You Like a Rainbow, I was like, yeah, screw you. I've got rainbows. So there. Um, the other rainbow thing that I'm stashing, <laughs> for some reason I cannot locate it right now. Ah. <clears throat> it's an awesome, awesome, awesome rainbow. Okay, so um, one of the things that I'm doing lately is reading um, this really awesome trilogy, or there's seven of them ultimately of the book, so I don't know if that would be called a sep septet or a septology. Seven series set of books by Edgar Rice Burroughs, old school book from like the 1800s, and it's called the Barsoom series. You might also know it, know it as the Princess of Mars, a Warlord of Mars. 
Um, there was a really horrible but fun Disney movie a couple of years ago called John Carter that was about the stories, but um, they're based on Mars. And this colorway, long segue, is called Martian Rainbow. And this is yarn by Stacy of, um, I think it's called Mustache Yarns. She is one of the, she is a co-host of the Mustache podcast and she has a yarn company that's about a year old now and she has awesome colorways. She actually sent me some samples a little while ago, but this is, there's 12, I believe there's 12 different colors in here. And again, it's caked up so you can't see very well. Um, but it's such a good progression. Like there is yellow, yellowish green, green, bluish green, blue. Bluish purple, purple. Purplish red, red. Reddish pink, pink. Pinkish orange, orange. Like it's it's just really great. Yay, progression. So I am knitting on a simple pair of fingerless gloves. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm starting to put a little chevron in there. So they will be my very own rainbow bright mitts because I am seven. And I remember, remember, I remember Boimble White. I remember Rainbow Bright very fondly. So yay for our rainbows. Very exciting. Um, and this is being kept in my Erin Lane brassiere bag. Tiny little bag with fun brassieres all over it. And I think I have a couple more rainbows, yeah. Um, the other rainbow stash that I have is something that I actually spun. Um, this is some lovely fiber from Turquoise Owl, um, who is also an Etsy seller. She makes punies and Rolex. I think she sells predominantly fiber. I don't think she sells yarn. And I will show you an in-progress picture of this because this was about an ounce of punies. Um, and I think it's, oh, I have the label here. It's about an ounce of punies. And the fiber blend was, uh, the color is called Paintbrush, <clears throat> and this was, oh gosh, it doesn't have it on the label. Ah, Merino, Angora, BFL, and Falkland. So it's a little bit more of a rustic um, blend that I'm used to. It just has kind of a, not a rougher feel at all, but it's not as, I don't know, um, it feels much more woolen in preparation, in terms of the fibers themselves not being all totally aligned. Um, maybe that's the Falkland in there because I haven't spun with Falkland before, but it was a really fun really quick spin I spun this on my um, Hanson mini um, Electric mini spinner um, and it took me about three days, which I know it's only an ounce But I'm usually not that fast of a spinner. So between them being punies between it only being an ounce um, And be between me being on the electric spinning wheel I think that's probably why I went so fast so I already know what I want to make with this but I want to hold off a tiny bit <clears throat> Or actually, maybe I'll start it today. I'm seeing a friend and teaching her how to knit. Maybe I'll start this today as, as motivation for her. Um, but I want to make a, um, I forget what the pattern is called, but I think if you, go if you Google, if you search in Ravelry for a pattern called braided necklace or cable braid necklace, it'll show up. It's a really simple, lovely necklace that is stockinette knitting. Um, and you weave two pieces of that stock and then knitting in and out so that it looks like a braid. And I think it'd be a really fun pattern to highlight this yarn in. So that's what I'm going to do with it. The other, the last rainbow that I have is not a full rainbow, but it is a color bridge progression that I am very, very happy about and very almost proud of. Um, you guys know that I'm a member or I signed up for the um, Yarantini Wool Bar CUIO Choose Your Own uh, Self Striping Color group or membership. It was a three month membership where we got to create our own self striping yarns from all the colors that Jen has at her disposal. Um, it's a lovely cloudy day outside, so the lights keep kind of dimming and um, getting brighter. So I'm just mesmerized by the cloudy sky out there. Uh, but yay, um, yes, this is some yarn that I chose the colors for and I'm so excited because it reminds me of my days as a graphic designer. Those of you guys who are designers, do you know, do you know what is inspired or what this colorway is inspired by? See, it's called CMY Gray, <laughs> a name that I made up for it, and it's um, based off of the CMYK process colors, the four colors that um, all printed inks are made of. And even that's printed, it's using one of these four colors in combination with each other. C is for cyan, M is for magenta, Y is for yellow, B is for black, 
and they also have the, the halfway point between the, the white and the black, which is the gray. Um, so I'm very, very excited about this yarn. The colors came out exactly how I wanted them to. Um, and I was swatching because I wanted to try and do some planned pooling with some self-striping yarn, um, but as I was kind of doing the swatching and testing, I decided that I, I loved the CMY gray so much that I didn't want it to get lost in any kind of planned pooling, so I'm going to look at the rest of my stash for stuff that could be candidates for planned pooling, but this will likely become a fun pair of socks, um, or maybe even a cuff depending on how thin the stripes get, because this is about 48 stitches around, and um, I think it's a very nice kind of length for each color block, so yay for that! And I think that puts an end to the what I'm stashing for the rainbow piece. I did go to Maryland Sheep and Wool a couple of weeks ago. I can't believe it's already been a couple of weeks. I'm so sorry I haven't had a chance to record since then. But I did want to show you some fun stash that I got from there after I take a sip of water. I'm trying to be better at hydrating because <laughs> it's about to get hot in New York and I cannot afford to be dehydrated the way I have been in the past because it has had me hospitalized, which is no fun. All right, so I obviously bought fiber at Maryland Sheep and Wool um, because that's what I was in the market for. I really went there on a mission. I wanted to get um, a spindle lap wool from Spanish Peacock, perhaps a, one of his um, Russian spindles perhaps a silk spindle, and um, some fiber. So I got all of that, and I will show you um, two of those three things, or three of those four things right now. This is my new spindle from Spanish Peacock. It's so lovely. I cannot show you the shaft because it has fiber on it. Um, <clears throat> but I believe this is birch. It's a birch shaft with, um, I think he calls this wood diamond wood, I'm not really sure. A lot of different people have different um, terms for this kind of wood. Some people call it diamond wood, some people call it um, composite wood. But it's, and again, I don't think I can show you too closely because I have the zoom function turned off, but it's... Um, layers and layers of wood that are kind of fused together in some really technical way that I don't know about um, and it kind of makes it stronger <clears throat> but it also gives that really fun kind of striping pooling uh, tie-dye effect so I'm really excited about this. It is now one of my longer bigger spindles and, and if you guys remember when I did my spindle tour a little while ago I said that long spindles usually aren't my jam this is about 12 inches but it's so far so good I mean um, I'm spinning some fiber from gourmet stash on it and it's it's turning out to be my normal um, single for spindle spun stuff so it's pretty good I'm happy with it and what is the fiber that I'm spinning on I will have to tell you in another episode because it's all the way over there and I don't feel like getting up but it's gourmet stash and it's a fun color that I got from her in her Maryland sheep and wool booth it was a really great trip I will tell you all about it a little bit later um, but it's lovely lovely fiber and the reason I'm so excited is because this is the matching spindle bowl. So this is a lap bowl. It's supposed to be something that you can sit and spin with in your lap so that you don't have to kind of um, worry about the height of your arms as you spin. Um, and it happens to coordinate perfectly with my new spindle. So yay for matching sets. And I think that is all I will show you in terms of my Maryland Sheep and Wool haul. Let's talk about what I'm crafting. So what am I crafting? As ever, I'm crafting on a couple of things, but I'm only going to show you one. The one that's just going to be here for a little while is my sister's hoopah. Again, it's sitting right over there on the couch. Um, I won't show it to you until I get to the next segment of it. I have now four months to finish it, and um, over the Mother's Day weekend I hung out with my mom and sisters and father-in-law, and we talked about my sister's wedding and planning, so I have now lost a month. In finishing the hoppa, so I was hoping to plan it at the end of um, July. I want to finish it. Oh my god, I just did the math. Ooh, I'm sorry. My sister's getting married on August 10th. I wanted to finish it by the beginning of August, but now I want to finish it a month ahead. So now I have to finish it by June 10th, and we are at April 15th. Sorry, I'm May 15th. I am freaking out right now. I'm sorry. I'm not allowed to do anything else. 
All I can do is go to work and knit on this hoopla. Crap. Okay. Damn it. <laughs> so what I wanted to do... Oh god, I think I'm gonna end up crocheting some of the hoopla, y'all. <laughs> we'll see. I need to make it six foot by four feet. Um, but after talking with my father-in-law, I need to make the hoopla six feet by six feet. Um, god, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> okay, I can do this. So, suffice it to say that I had like three things on the needles, but I now can only have one thing on the needle. But I will show you what else I had on the needle now that I have to stop working on it. Arr. <laughs> we have a quarterly knit along in our group. Um, this this quarter it's co co-hosted with Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast and Maria of the Subway Knits podcast, and it's called the I Knit NYC Cow, and we're basically making things that inspire us, make us excited, and make us reminded of New York City and the five boroughs. So each of us has chosen a pattern that is either from a New Yorker says New York to us, or we're using yarn or fiber dyed by a New York-based indie dyer. So this is my project. This is the Cascades shawl. It's a lovely, lovely free shawl pattern, um, and it's featuring yarn by both Plucky Knitter, which is the green, and uh, Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast, which, podcast, which is this really fun um, orange, purple, gray colorway. Um, what's happening is that it started pooling very nicely in this kind of zigzag pattern, but as I started to decrease, it's actually becoming a self-striping a little bit. And the only modifications that I'm making are, um, I realized that the shawl was going to be pretty small um, from the beginning and I, I kind of wanted that, but if I had continued to decrease as they wanted me to, the shawl, um, the wings I guess of the shawl would have stopped right about here before they decreased down to nothing, and I said that's way too thin and way too small, so I just basically got to a point where I had only 20 stitches left on the needle, and I'm just extending that 20 stitches out, so that when I wear it, it can kind of wrap around, and my braids are gonna get in the way, so you won't be able to see, so that it can kind of hang down um, to maybe halfway, Ooh, let me try and stand up, so to maybe halfway where to where the um, scarf ends, so that's the plan, so I'm probably gonna, get there by the end of the day today and then start with the green but i probably won't be able to finish it in time for the cow because i gotta concentrate on my sister's hippo <sighs> that's okay i signed myself for permit obligation so it is what it is um <laughs> i'm sorry i'm like really worried now i feel like company is coming in there about to knock on the door so i can't work on anything else so i had a, a lot of other things to talk to you guys about um but how would I just leave you with this? A reminder that if you are participating in the knit along, it ends at the end of June. It's a three month knit along. Every quarter we have a new one. And there are some awesome prizes that you can check out in the Ravelry group for it. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much to all of our group members. We are at about 710 group members. Um, and I actually, like, I picked people that won prizes and I wanted to talk to you about it. But now I, I seriously need to reevaluate my weekend. <laughs> If I have to finish a shawl, if I have to knit three feet of fingering weight yarn in a month and two weeks. So while I go have a little crafty breakdown, I hope that you guys um, are enjoying the beginning of your summer, the end of your spring, um, and that rainbows are somewhere in your future because they're awesome and they're making me happy, so hopefully they're making you happy as well. And if I don't see you for a little while, you will find me under a pile of hopa knitting. Um, in the meantime, if you can't craft it, stash it. Cheers! <laughs>